Beat em Up's my absolute favourite gaming genre. And in this week's show, we're going to be taking a look at my top 20 Beat em Up and Brawlers for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. <laughs> So we've got a lot of games to get through, but before we do that, pause this video, jump down to the comments box, and let me know what you think my top three games in this top 20 list are gonna be. Right, let's check out my top 20 beat em up brawlers on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. <laughs> DJ Boy was developed by Kaneko and published by Sega and Sammy. The game was originally an arcade game that was later ported to the Mega Drive and Genesis. The game sees you take control of DJ Boy, a roller skating vigilante who in the Japanese version of the game is trying to rescue his girlfriend, but in the Western version he's trying to get his radio back. The game has some solid and fast paced beat em up action. The skating mechanic allows you to move around the combat area fast with the screen auto scrolling the levels. The game has basic combos with punches, kicks and jumping. It's a fun game and one of the better arcade ports. Our next game is from Data East, a favourite developer and publisher of mine, and they've brought Captain America and the Avengers to the Genesis in 1992. The game sees four classic Marvel heroes take on Red Skull, who has assembled some of the greatest supervillains to take down the Avengers. Players can choose to play as Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye and Vision. The game has some great variation in the combat, with all four characters having special long-range moves and some cool aerial attacks. Players can also punch, throw enemies and objects, as well as dash. Captain America and the Avengers is a solid beat-em-up with some nice visuals for a first-generation Mega Drive game. <laughs> Alien Storm is another classic arcade port from Sega and came to the 16-bit console in 1991. The game mixes in some first-person shooter elements into the brawler action and has a few levels that sees you running at high speeds as you dispatch your enemies. Thematically, the game has a lot of personality and was one of the more visually impressive Genesis games of its time. The combat is fun, if not a little clunky at times, as the game tries to merge shooting and CQC together. The game is two-player and is a decent addition for beat-em-up fans. <laughs> Double Dragon has a huge amount of nostalgia for me, as it is the first beat-em-up I completed at the arcades. This is another arcade port and a pretty faithful one of that, with the Genesis release coming five years after the original arcade. Double Dragon helped usher in the modern beat-em-up genre and brawler gameplay with scrolling environments, two-player gameplay and the ability to pick up and use weapons. Characters could also combine moves like grappling and kneeing their enemies in the face. And you could combine button presses to perform new moves. <laughs> Two Crew Dudes, or Crew Buster as it's known in Asian territories, is another classic Data East beat-em-up. The original arcade version of the game boasted some gorgeous background visuals with its post-apocalyptic theme and some big character sprites. Whilst the Sega Genesis port was fairly faithful with the same levels and gameplay beats, the visuals took a bit of a hit. Combat gameplay is slower than more modern beat-em-ups that we're used to, with your characters acting more like huge slow tanks than nimble fighters. The slower gameplay polarizes some gamers, but those that took the time to appreciate it were rewarded with solid heavyweight beat-em-up with some interesting combat that allowed you to use scenery from the levels to take out your enemies. The Splatoon series of games are notoriously gruesome and are some of the hardest beat-em-up action games out there. Splatterhouse 3 never received a PAL EU release due to the blood and violence in the game and the compromises the developers would need to make to the original vision of the game. The game is more of a traditional beat em up brawler when compared to its predecessors, but still retains the ability to use weapons and introduces the ability to transform into a super being with increased strength. The level structure is very different and as you navigate the house clearing floors before you can progress. The game, along with Splatterhouse 2, was a Sega Genesis exclusive. <laughs> it's hard to find any TV or film licensed game from the 90s that was actually any good, but Mighty Morphing Power Rangers the movie may just be one of them. Rather than opting for the obligatory action platformer, Banpresto created a very solid and fun beat-em-up. The combat gameplay was fast and had three button combos as well as jump attacks. What lifted the game above others though is that the beat-em-up combat felt good, 
It wasn't groundbreaking, but it was closer to modern arcade beat-em-ups with enemy health bars, fast gameplay, and single button combos. The game also had a unique boss mode where your characters were combined to form a giant robot to take down the end of level boss. Battletoads is a port from the Nintendo Entertainment System, which is really odd as the Master System Battletoads, Battle Maniacs, is a port of the Super Nintendo version. This is a beat-em-up and platformer and action game all rolled into one. And whilst the gameplay and variation is brilliant, the difficulty level is not. It's one of the harder beat-em-ups to master, and this is largely down to the non-beat-em-up levels. When you're beating up things though, the game is fun and fast. The visuals are a big letdown though, with the game not looking much better than the original NES game. Play both as Spider-Man and Venom as you try to take down enemies like Doppelganger, Demigoblin, Shriek and Carnage in maximum carnage. Both Spider-Man and Venom can not only punch and kick their way through the levels, but they can also use their webs to restrain, drag and attack enemies. You can also web sling and climb up walls to navigate the levels. Combat feels responsive and the inclusion of web attacks mixes up the beat em up elements of the game. Levels are split up with some awesome comic book cutscenes and the overall presentation feels like a superhero comic book. Water Margin is a game originally released in China and Taiwan in the mid 90s. The game is a clone of the massively successful Knights of the Round but brings its own characters, levels and narrative to the party. It's a very strong beat-em-up with some great combat gameplay and some lovely full-screen effect magic moves. The game also has some really nice sprite work in the levels, introducing loads of parallax scrolling and larger character sprites. Water Margin is what we've come to expect from modern beat-em-ups and is worth adding to your collection. The game received an official release in Europe and North America nearly 20 years later in late 2015. Now if you haven't already, make sure you like this video and share it, it really helps supercharge the show. And of course remember to drop down into the comments and let us know what you think those top 3 games are going to be. Mason Wars is another early beat-em-up for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, getting its release in all major territories in 1993. You play as Dr. Koji who invents a super suit of armour to take on an evil force that has decimated Earth. The game was one of the last first generation type games but even so had some nice visuals and in some places some huge sprites. The game is primarily a beat em up brawler with your character being armed with a huge sword to dispatch enemies with. At the end of each level your character grows to the size of a skyscraper to take on the end of level boss in a fighter style battle. The Punisher is a game based on the popular Marvel comic book series and sees you pick up Frank Castle's story soon after he becomes the Punisher. If you play the game in two player then Nick Fury from S.H.I.E.L.D. joins the fight. The game has some wonderful beat em up action with one of the first games to really focus on decent sound design. The combat gameplay switches between CQC and range gun combat which is extremely gratifying. The game's art style feels very much like a comic book and the levels are varied and well drawn. Golden Axe is one of the most iconic games of the 16-bit era and one of the most loved franchises within Sega's 16-bit catalogue. Heavily inspired by the Conan Barbarian films and sword and sorcery novels, Golden Axe follows a fellowship of warriors on a quest to end the brutal rule of Death Adder. The sword combat in the game is simply stunning with three breast combos, aerial attacks, dash attacks and standard attacks. The game introduces mounts and collectible magic attacks. It was a phenomenal game set in a stunning world with giants, trolls and skeletons and it had an amazing soundtrack and audio design that caps off one of the all time best beat em ups. Golden Axe 2 is the sequel to our previous beat em up and has improved on the original in every way. Sword combat is tighter and more responsive and visuals and enemy AI is improved. Unfortunately this would be the last great Golden Axe game to be released on a console. Streets of Rage 3 boasted new characters, new moves, bigger sprites, more ambitious level design and a tougher challenge. Yet for a large number of players it remains their fourth favourite in the series. 
Whilst the game is still excellent and a stunning well-designed beat-em-up, the longer levels feel like padding, the audio track, whilst thematically apt, didn't meet the expectation of players, the bizarre censorship in the EU and US meant we didn't get the full experience, and for some reason, Axel is wearing Adam's clothes. Comic Zone features in a lot of these top games lists that we have on the show, and it's here again. It's quite simply a gem of a game. The presentation of the game is so unique, not only for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, but in gaming in general. The combat is excellent with your standard punches and kicks really connecting with the enemies that are drawn in front of you. The visuals are some of the best found on 16-bit consoles and the audio design is absolutely thumping. This is not just one of the best beat-em-ups on the console, but one of the best games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. I'm often torn between Streets of Rage 1 and 2 as to which is the best. Streets of Rage 1 is such a leap forward for beat-em-ups on the system. Great visuals and awesome universe, combat gameplay that was more likely found on an arcade than a console, and amazingly scored soundtrack. The level design is amazing and enemy AI well balanced. It's such a well balanced game with glints of greatness that it is impossible not to love this beat-em-up. One of my all-time favourite arcade beat-em-ups is the Turtles arcade game. I spent hours in the arcade playing the game and watching others, and when I found out that the Mega Drive would be getting its own Turtles beat-em-up, I instantly started saving up for it. Now, Due to the Super Nintendo getting exclusivity to the arcade port of Turtles in Time, we Sega Genesis and Mega Drive owners had to settle for an inspired by version of the original and Turtles in Time game from Kainami. And what a game it is! Some players say that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist is superior to the Super Nintendo port with longer levels and tighter combat. I don't know about that, but what I do know is that this game is one of the best beat-em-ups on the system. It is so authentic to the original TV cartoon material and everything about the game screams arcade beat-em-up with stunning audio, visuals and combat design. <laughs> Our next game is a game that I bought almost two years ago, spent a huge amount of money on and still don't have. Yep, it's Paprium. Now in order to make this show I've had to go out and borrow my copy of Paprium and despite my extreme frustration at still not owning this game, I have to say it's quite simply spectacular. The amount of polish and attention to detail in the game has blown me away. It has to be one of the best looking Mega Drive games and is for sure the best looking beat em up game on the system. I'm at awe at what this game does. There's so much replayability with multiple gameplay parts. You can see the Streets of Rage and Golden Axe influence in combat and with mounts. There are meta gameplay systems in there like getting addicted to the drug you can use. The sound is great and my CRT TV loves the graphics. There are a few issues with enemy AI, it can be a bit stupid at times, but that didn't stop me from loving this game. I need my copy even more now. So what's my best beat em up and brawler on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive? Well if you've not guessed already, it's Streets of Rage 2. Streets of Rage 2 for me still remains the definitive beat em up on the platform. Paprium came close to dethroning it, but the fact that the game was so heavily influenced by the brilliance of Streets of Rage 2 speaks volumes. Streets of Rage 2 is one of the most impressive sequels I've ever seen, not since Street Fighter 2 has a game improved so much over the original. The balance and purity of the combat gameplay makes the thousands of playthroughs I've done in the game a joy to experience every time. The artwork really captures that 90s feel and has helped the game feel as fresh and as exciting as when it was first released. And of course, the soundtrack is not just great, it's iconic, it's pop culture, it's firmly ingrained in gaming history. There have been some stunning beat em ups in this list, but Streets of Rage 2 is legendary. So those were my top 20 beat em up and brawlers on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Did you drop down in the comments below, did you guess the three that I had as my top three? And what are your top 20? I'd love to know the games that you loved, the beat em up games that you loved on the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. 
Now, if you've enjoyed this show and you're new to the channel, why not consider subscribing? You can do that by clicking on a little button just below the video. And we put out brand new shows every single Monday. And so that you'd never miss it, you can also click on a little bell also just below this video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos for you to enjoy. Two of which you can watch over here.